All right, we'll get started here in a few minutes. Can you let me know that you can hear me by just uh, give me an okay in the chat for those of you of you who are on right now? Perfect. Just want to make sure we're there. If I need to be louder, please don't be afraid to stick that in the chat as well. Okay. Um, first time on YouTube. We've been doing the Zoom thing for the last four and a half months. I feel fairly comfortable on this. I'm sure you guys are better at this YouTube than I am, but this first time we're doing it on this uh, platform. And I just want to make sure it goes as smoothly as it can with regards to that. I'm going to give... Uh, People better three to five minutes here to get into the room, um, and then we will get started. We uh, anticipate this lasting about 25 minutes, which I think is about the right time for something of this sort. And again, at that time, I certainly uh, will be around to answer whatever questions uh, any of you might have as we go forward. All right, so just hang in there for a few more minutes. Thanks again for being on, and we'll get started in just a little bit.
Okay, man. Thank you so much for being here today. I really do appreciate it. We're going to get started right now. I want to thank you for being part of our first Rising Senior Day. Now, all of you might be in a little bit different boat. Um, and again, if you can't hear me, please let me know in the chat. Again, as I told some of the guys who were on five minutes ago, first time doing this, it might be a little bit different. So what I want to talk about a little bit is, hey, you might all be in a little bit different situation, but this presentation is for all of you, whether we have just found out about you in the last few weeks, whether you've done maybe a virtual home visit or you've spoken to one of our coaches, or whether you've already gone through the process of an early read and possibly received an offer, this will be new information um, wherever you are in that process. Um, Give me an idea of what we plan to do today. Um, as I said, this is about a 25 minute presentation. It'll start with kind of my vision statement, mission for the program. And then I'm gonna kind of divide this into four parts after that. I'm gonna talk a little about the academics of the school, how it relates to the mission of the program. I think there's a nice uh, juxtaposition there. I will talk about my philosophy from a football standpoint. Then I will talk about the three things we are looking for in recruits. That's a big part of it as well. And lastly, I'll talk about what I call my call to action, what we're looking for from you. After that, I will spend whatever time you have answering whatever questions you have. And if you'd rather do that individually, uh, maybe with your family or whatever, whatnot, be certainly happy to do that as well. But again, thank you for being here. I want to start by talking about, hey, what is the mission of the program? Any good organization, whether it's IBM or Amazon or a school or a football program has a mission statement. And what that is designed to do is to define what success is. Okay. And we have that here and I'm going to read that to you um, just to be clear on that. Our vision, the vision of this program is come the benchmark by which other Midwest conference schools, and for those who don't know, that's the conference we play in, measure their football programs in terms of five pillars is the term I use. Coaching, recruiting, organization, academics, and service. Those are the five areas we really, really want to excel in, in terms of what we're doing. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. So what does that mean? Well, what I'm trying to say is when other coaches in the league are talking about, uh, hey, you know who does a great job recruiting? Grinnell. You know who does a great job in terms of using their steam on the field? Grinnell. That's what we speak about. That's what we're trying to get other schools to do. That's how we're defining success. Now, to achieve that, and this is the big part of this, I always put this in yellow in a presentation, I just can't see if you just listen to me, but the implementation of efficient systems within these pillars will yield on the field success. So you'll notice that that definition didn't talk about wins. The reason is once we've gotten to that definition, the wins have already come. Okay, we're going to have that on the field success with that. And that's what we talk about, establishing efficient systems within these pillars to yield that on the field success. And hey, what I'm saying with that essentially is that, hey, having a mission and vision is great. I think that's important. But at that point, it's a dream. It's a hope. When you put a plan together, that's the efficient systems part. Now it becomes a goal and it becomes much more tangible. And that's the process we're embarking on somewhat together. But certainly that's the part I've been tasked with over these first six months. All right. So I'm going to first talk about that. How does that relate to the school? How does that relate to Grinnell College? Well, the irony is that the college is already doing this. This is what they do, which makes it a fantastic opportunity and investment, whatever term you want to use in terms of higher education. I'm going to give you an example. here. Let's just say, and again, I'm throwing it out there. You want to be an investment banker. That's your goal. OK, one of the things I always talk about, what's the ultimate goal of college? What are you trying to achieve? And a lot of you would probably answer coaches to be more educated or to do that. And I think those are all great. And there is benefit to a world being more educated than it is now. All right. I, I completely agree with that. But that's not the individual goal of why you go to college. You don't have to go to college to get the job market. All right. There are jobs out there you can go without ever attending undergraduate school. But. For most of you, or almost all of you, you're going to college to begin a career or go to graduate school. I'll talk about that in a second, but to begin a career, you could not get otherwise without an undergraduate education. So I'm going back to my investment banker system. That's Let's say that's your goal. Coach, I want to do this. I want to work on a Wall Street bank. 
All right. It could be anything. It doesn't matter what it is, but that's the example I'm using. So you have two options here. You can major in economics. All right. You can take a bunch of classes it's related to economics and then other classes you're forced to take by the school. And then you can start pounding the pavement for a job after you graduate. Or part two, the second option, you can, you can major in uh, computer science, mathematics, economics, also finance, whatever that happens to be. Take a bunch of classes that help you develop the hard and soft skills you need to have success. Work with career advisors the moment you get to school to the moment you graduate and have multiple job offers at investment banks by the time you walk out the door. Okay. Now, which is the better way of achieving the goal? What's the efficient system there in terms of achieving the goal to establish your career path outside of college? All right. It's clearly number two. Now, liberal arts education as a whole has been using Model 1 for centuries, a long, long time, to say the least. And quite frankly, up until about the turn of this century, I would say 20, 25 years ago, that was successful. You could do that. When I was in school, you could do that. And the reason is hey, there just wasn't as much competition as there is in the world today. Everything was local or regional in scope. You're not entering that world, and you know that. You know that better than people my age in some ways. It is a national and international world. We are that connected. And you are highly, highly attuned to that in so many ways. So because of that, that second model is what Grinnell does because they think that is the key aspect to achieving your goal. Again, we're talking about efficient systems to achieve a goal. And that's what Grinnell does in a lot of different ways. And, and it's again, it's taking this world-class education and then using... A, a nationally renowned, what we call our CLS center, but essentially a nationally renowned career center to help you achieve your goal in terms of higher education. And then there are those of you, coach, that sounds great, but I want to be a doctor, lawyer. I got to go. There's more schooling for me after this. Perfect. Our career center, our advisors work with this. It's, you know, we call it the career, uh, center for careers, life and service. Well, the career is part of it. And obviously being a doctor, or lawyer is part of that career, but it's not just that. It's other factors as well to get you there. 90% of our kids get into one of their top two graduate schools. 90% of our kids get into one of their top two choice graduate schools, whether doctor, lawyer, whatever. And men, no disrespect, we're, we're applying to Harvard Law. We're applying to Stanford Business, okay? University of Chicago Medical School. Those are the schools our kids apply to and end up going to, all right? These are top, top, highly competitive institutions. So I want to flip that back with, OK, we have efficient systems within the college. How are we going to do that from a football program standpoint? Well, there are four attributes to and, and some of this is just my philosophy over 20 years of coaching. What I look for, what is important to me. And the first thing is from a standpoint is we are going to implement schemes. That do that accentuate or highlight what our players do best and particularly what are good players do best. One of the questions I get from a lot of you, all right, in a good way, is, Coach, what do you guys do on offense? What do you guys do on defense? And I, that's a great question. And I think a lot of you, see, when I say this wish you well, it depends on what you do well, I think a lot of you see that as a wishy-washy answer. I promise you it's not. It's certainly not meant to be. What it's saying is that players slash talent trump scheme. Okay? I don't want to be beholden to a system that requires me to always have a great quarterback. What if he gets hurt? I, mean, I can recruit a great quarterback. That's great. What if that guy gets hurt? I don't want to be beholden to a system that requires me to have two fantastic linebackers to run consistently. Okay? And the other opposite of that, I don't want to have, say, say I'm a four wide team. I don't want to have – I got two tight ends that really want to be here, and they're really good players. What am I going to do with them? All right? I don't want to be beholden to what I recruit in the recruiting process in a system that requires certain players to be great. And I always have to have that. I want to morph my scheme to that. Let me give you a great example of that. You're all familiar with it. Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. Prior to his arrival was Joe Flacco. I guess he was there 10 years or so. And hey, it was a drop back offense. And it fit what they did. Play great defense, run the ball, throw the ball deep because he has an arm. All right. Then they get this very unique talent in Lamar Jackson. And I know he played at the end of 2018, but the offense really morphed into what we saw last year, which is, Hey, a lot more quarterback run game, getting him on the perimeter and letting him create both with his arms and his feet. That's what we're trying to do. All right. We want to take great players and put them in a system that works for them. 
That's what we're looking for. That's true on offense, defense, and even special teams in terms of that. That's what we talk about when we talk about players trump scheme in that sense. So it's not meant to be a wishy-washy answer. It's to say, yeah, we got a few things we're going to hang our hat on that we want to be successful in. All right? But beyond that, we're going to morph it into whatever fits the talent that we currently have. All right? Number two with regards to this, I want guys who we're going to play fast. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to tell you what it means. It doesn't mean the guy who times that 40 quickest. I'm not looking for a bunch of guys who go run 4-6. If you can, that's great. Don't get me wrong. But that's not the key attribute I'm talking about when I say play fast. I want you to think back to your high school team last year. And just think of your kickoff team, okay? Who was the fastest guy on your kickoff? He was the first guy down there into the wedge or, or whatever your scheme happened to be. I'm going to guess it wasn't the guy who timed the fastest, right? It's the guy who plays the fastest, all right? That's the key thing we're looking for. Now, the other thing that allows you to play fast and attributes more to the coaching aspect of it is this. We're not going to have so much scheme that you don't understand what you're doing because we haven't repped it enough. I was just at a clinic. It's about two months ago. It was online like everything else is right now. And a guy was explaining to me his 12 versions of cover two. And I was like, yeah, he's got a 200-page playbook. I'm sure it's all good stuff. I'm not questioning that. It's just there is not enough time or reps available to teach that and be effective with it consistently. You just can't. You're going to have confused players on the field. It is the one thing that I hate when we do so. When I see someone not recognize what they're doing in a game situation, hey, is it sometimes on the player? Sure. If we've repped it 25 times, I kind of expect you to know it when you do it in a game. If we've repped it twice, that's not on the player. That's on the coach. That's on the coaching staff putting in too much. I believe about 80 to 90 percent of the teams at all levels of college football have too much offense or defense. We're not going to do that. All right. We're going to get better at the techniques that you need to have success. And we want to be and when we talk about playing fast, this gets back to that. What we're speaking about is this. You're going to know what you're doing so well. It doesn't matter what the opponent's doing. All right. For those of you in some of my offensive clinic talking about that snag play, that's what I'm speaking about. All right. Hey, you're going to be so good at recognizing this. I don't care if they're cover two, cover three, man, blitz, whatever it is. You're going to know exactly where to go to the ball. And we're going to teach you how to do that. Defensively, we're going to do the exact same thing. The exact same thing. All right. Thirdly, we are going to prioritize high leverage situations. This is mentioned on the virtual home visit. I certainly focus on this. What do I mean by that? Well, high leverage situations are what I consider plays and situations that determine the difference between winning and losing winning and losing. For me, those are third downs, red zone, and fourth downs to an extent. They're just not as often as the other two situations. But that's what I speak about. Again, go back. I want you to just think back to your last season. If you just picked up two more third downs a game and you had prevented two more third downs a game, that's it. Four plays in a, I don't know, under 20 snap game, roughly, whatever that happens to be. I want you to tell me how much, how many more games you would have won had you simply executed better on those four plays. You have to remember, that's possibly a 28-point swing. You convert a third down, boom. What does that mean? Continue a drive, possibly score. If you're preventing a third down, they're not continuing a drive, and they are forced to make a decision, most likely punt, certainly depending on where they are on the football field. That is what we're speaking about, okay? So we're going to prioritize that. What does it mean? We're going to practice it, and we're going to practice it a lot because we want to win those situations because they lead directly two points on or off the scoreboard for your opponent, and then directly to winning and losing. That is a key attribute to what we're trying to do. And lastly, we are going to prioritize and take risks to make big plays. All right? That is true on offense. That is true on defense. That is particularly true on special teams. Particularly true on special teams. And one of the things is we're going to spend that time on special teams that we need, but we're not going to spend time doing things that don't help us. I've been, I can't tell you how many times I've worked division one, two, and three. All right. How many times it's spent on punt return when the opposing punter can't kick? He's not very good. So it's going to spray and you're spending time setting up a return. You do that in camp, you do that in season practice, and the opponent doesn't have a kicker that's going to let you do that. All right. That's going to let you set up the return or you're guessing and hoping for the best. There's just no point in that. That is wasted practice time for things you're never going to execute in a game. But you know what we can do? All right, we can go after the punt because we know how they're going to line up. 
we can, we, again, we can, like I said, try to block the punt. We can certainly work on forcing turnovers. We could certainly do fake punts because, again, we're going to have an idea of how they're going to line up defensively in those situations. That's why I talk about with big plays. It's making big plays and chances happen, both in the king. And we're going to throw the ball down the offense. Same thing. All right. I, it's hard to put a drive together, 13 plays for 75 yards for a touchdown at this level, at your level, really up to you get to the pros. All right. When you can get big chunks, four play 80 yard drives, that's easier. We're going to take chances in doing that, both in the run and the pass game. So the question I often get at this point is, coach, what are you looking for? What, what are you, what's important to you in a recruit? Well, there's three attributes. The first is academic. And for those of you who've gone a little bit farther in this process with you, you know that, right? <laughs> because the first thing, one of the first things we ask you, what are your grades? What are your test scores? All right. Men, you could be the next Pat Mahomes. All right. And if you are, kudos to you. That's great. Or the next J.J. Watt. Doesn't matter what side of the ball. If you don't have the grades to get into school here, I am wasting my time talking to you and I'm wasting your time talking to you. So the first thing I mention is academics. I mention grades. That's important in terms of what we're doing. Now, there's a second attribute to that. And what that is, is that you need to value this opportunity. You need to understand this is different than most every other school out there. And you need to recognize that and value that opportunity. That's what we're asking you to do with regards to that. That's important to us. Okay. Um, And generally, I can tell that by comparing schools. Am I seeing other peer schools similar to us? Then, Then I know you do. If I don't, then I yeah, it's a red flag for us in a lot of ways. Doesn't mean I'm not going to recruit you. Just means I need you to recognize this isn't the same as some of these other schools you might be looking at. Number two, I am looking for talent. We're looking for guys who can play football. Now, gee, coach, every team in the nation is doing that. Of course, that's exactly correct. Every team in the country is doing some version of that. There is a slight difference, though. We look at your game film almost exclusively to determine that. And why is that? Because I can go to camp. I can show up in high school in shorts. And I was a receiver in high school. Wasn't very good, but that's beside the point. I was a receiver in high school. I can catch a hitch. I can catch a slant. I can catch a 10-yard out. I can catch an under. I can do all that at a camp with no gear. That's just not that hard to do if you have the hands and have the ability. You've got a coach to run some routes. All right? Now, you put me in a game situation. All right? I'm in the training room by snap three. All right. It's the old Joe Lewis. And for those who don't know, heavyweight champion of the world in the 30s and 40s. Um, hey, everyone's got a plan until they get hit. All right. That's the reality of it. I don't really care what you do in a camp setting. And frankly, man, go back to your team. Every single one of you has a teammate, maybe two, who kills it in the weight room, kills it in conditioning, looks fantastic. He's not a good football player. It never translates to the field for whatever reason. Every single one of you has that. I don't want that guy. I want the guy who plays hard. I want the guy who's a good football player. And you know what that means? That means taking guys who may not look like a traditional football player. All right? It's the guy who's a little bit slower. It's the guy who might not, you know, might not be as big, whether it's tall or weight or whatever that is. But he's got the two attributes I'm looking for. He's got this. He's got this. You can do those things. You're going to be great. Those are the guys I'm looking for. Those are the guys I'm looking for to be part of this team. I'm going to give you one example related to that. When I was at Rhodes College about seven, eight years ago, we had a cornerback. He was five foot one. I'm not stuttering there, man. He was five foot one. He was that short. All right. Now, if he was five foot six, he would have been a scholarship player. I want to make that clear. He would have been a scholarship player at five foot six. He had every attribute you would have wanted in a football player except height. All right. Now, we we understood there were some limitations to that. Right. I mean, that goes without saying we understand that yeah, you're not going to put him in man coverage in the red zone on a six three receiver. That's not going to help the cause. But he could do all these things. He brought a ton of value to our defensive team in a bunch of different ways. That's a guy I want to. I'm OK recruiting that guy. Now, I can't play quarter. I can't have a five one quarterback. There are limitations to this. But my point is we're looking for guys who can play football no matter how they show up into the program. And lastly, what I am looking for is I'm looking for leadership and character, leadership and character. And what does that mean? Well, hey, I'm looking for guys who understand this is a rebuilding project. This is going to take some time. I want guys who relish a challenge. 
I want guys who can take our current team. For those of you who've been on our player panels are aware of that. All right. That we, we got a great group of guys, but who can take that team, which has some talent and supplement it and lead them into a culture change of what a successful program looks like, which I defined at the very beginning of my discussion. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Got to relish a challenge and you got to be able to take our program from the wilderness into the light. Those are the guys that I'm looking for. Man, if you want to be a follower, there are a ton of programs out there. I can ballpark how many wins you'll have in your four, four year career. That that's, that's fine. That's probably, this probably in the program for you in that situation. But if you're looking for a challenge to make your mark in a football program, we're the school you're looking for. I promise you. All right, man, that's pretty much the end of that part of the discussion. What I want to discuss now are kind of next steps. And again, you're all a little bit different in the process. Number one, is for those of you who are just, oh, what's the term I'm using, who are just uh, starting out, learning about us, you need to reach your recruiting coach, contact them, set up a virtual home visit, have some time, spend some time learning a little bit more about us. Number two, if you are in that kind of, hey, coach, I've done my home visit, I've done these things, let's get an early read on it. Let's get an accurate appraisal from missions of exactly where you stand and continue the process from there. And for those of you who have done all that, you have an early read, you have an offer from us. This is simply part of this process. I want to remind you that we have a, uh, the application is opening up on the 1st of August. All right. That is, I believe that's next Saturday, actually. Um, It's the common application. We'll send some links out to you here this week about that, but this is just a reminder of that. All right. Lastly, I am going to talk about the next phase of this process, but if you have any questions for me, Put it in the chat. I want to spend some time answering that, but I want to give you some time to think about those questions. In the meantime, I'm going to spend a minute, minute and a half talking about the next phase of our rising senior day. All right. What we're planning to do next is on August 3rd is a meeting with financial aid. We've already set that up. It's going to be 6 o'clock p.m. Monday, August 3rd. That's about nine days from today. That discussion will be somewhat general in nature, but it is to talk about the specifics of Grinnell College's financial aid process. There are similarities to other schools, but there are some differences. We want to discuss that with you, and we want to have specific answers for you on certain things. That being said, it is not designed to be specific to your situation. In other words, if you've done the net price calculator, I think that's fantastic, great. But I just want you to be aware that that's not the time for that. You need to set up an individual consultation and we'll show you how to do that after you do the net price calculator going forward. Okay. All right, man. That's, that's like I said, that is all I have. If you have any questions, I'm, I'm going to be here as long as you need to. If you don't, if you don't feel as comfortable, please text me. All right. You can call me. You can find my email address. Mike, um, I should probably put that down just in case here. That is my cell number. Well, that's correct. That's not correct. There's no F in that. I apologize, man. It's just Barnes BR. That's accurate. There we go. So if you feel more comfortable not doing it on the chat, all right, but instead doing it on an individual basis, again, text me. Call me, email me. I will help you in any way that I can. All right? Anything else? I'm just giving a thumbs up, man. If Again, I'll stay on here for a few minutes. Um, again, the next, again, we'll get those links out to you regarding financial aid, and we will go from there. Renee, yes, you will. We'll get that out to you. That will probably not be by YouTube. That'll probably be by Zoom just because she is more comfortable with that. I will be on the call just so you're aware of that, but she's running the call. The woman in financial aid we've set up to do this. I'm going to introduce her and be there to, to kind of monitor, but that's that's their discussion. Again, that will probably be on Zoom. We will definitely get that link out to you next week when we set it up. Thank you for the thumbs up, man. Are there are there any questions? Don't be shy. This is the time.
I appreciate the thumbs up, man. Thank you. I'm going to phone or email right now. Cooper, yeah, I just saw that. I, again, I, I didn't go into much discussion on this because this is really rolling down the pike for the last 48 minutes. Cameron, you're welcome. What I want to say about game day visits, we have postponed our season up until the spring, at least for the moment. So we're not doing fall athletics. That is, I believe that will happen across Division Three here in the next few weeks. I don't think there's going to be any really Division Three fall athletics this season. Seven conferences canceled in the last two days on Thursday and Friday. There have already been seven that canceled before. Right now, there's probably half the schools have already canceled their seasons, and we don't believe there's going to be a Division Three season going forward. For those who don't know, the NCAA came out with some very specific guidelines on returning to play. Those are very cost ineffective for smaller schools. That's just kind of the nature of it. So we're disappointed. I know some of you may have had your seasons canceled. I know a lot of you have had them postponed. Some of you are going full speed ahead. Obviously wishing you the best with wherever you are on that. Will, you're welcome. Thank you. For those of you with thumbs up, Renee, Jaden, Gio, thank you very much. Thanks for being on the call. I appreciate it. Michael, you too. Hi, Caleb. Yeah, we're trying to put something together for, for visits. I'm actually, that, that is kind of my focus this week. We are beginning to get that process with a lot of guys and getting you here to campus, trying to put that together with a campus that is low density and at the very moment kind of closed. So we're not quite ready to come out with that. But when you know, when I know, you'll know. And again, I'm working with some of our coaches, administration and athletic administration to make that happen. Again, Gio, I, I think I, I answered that. At least at least I tried to. My initial thought, man, is this. If you can get up here, we'll make it happen. In other words, and the pandemic has obviously thrown everything into flux. We know that. We want to work with you with this. All right? I don't want to shoehorn you into days that may not fit for you because, well, Coach, we're playing our season. Or, Coach, that's our season just resumed. Or whatever's going on. i got to be at school. Whatever that happens to be. OK, so my thought is, if you can get here, you tell me when you get here, we will make it happen. That's my initial thought. Now, don't quote me on that yet. That's not official. That's my initial inclination to do. I'll have something more formal and more in ink, shall we say, official um, in a few. I, I'm hoping by the end of this week. I'm hoping by the end of this week. So but my intent is that. And let me ask you guys, does that sound good to you? Just being able to get up here, see us. Again, it's not going to look perfect. Hi, Caleb. Absolutely not. I sent an email about this maybe a month ago. You may not have been on a database, Caleb, but we have film on you on your junior year, most likely. Maybe some of you, Coach, I played JV. I was just moving up to varsity. Okay, give us that JV film. All right. We have made our recruiting – process with you based on the film we already have on you that is not going to change because you don't play senior year man i can't say this enough we are going to work with you in this process all right it's this pandemic has again affected everybody and more importantly it's affected every one of you differently all right i've got a kid from new mexico their season's already canceled all right i got a kid next door in arizona where their pandemic is apparently raging they are full steam ahead playing so we don't know where this is going and trying to establish set rules on this just seems foolish. We will work with you on an individual basis to give you all the information you need to make a decision about this. So, Caleb, I hope that answered your question. I hope you got what you wanted out of that. Text. All right. Those are good questions, man. Appreciate it. Is there anything else? I know there's about 25, 30 of you still on here. 
So again, don't don't be shy. I promise you, there are no bad questions right now. Thank you, Quinn Cooper. Thank you. Thanks for being on and listening. I appreciate it. Thank you, Gio. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. If I pronounce your name wrong. I apologize. I will be better at it when I get to know you a little bit better. Max, I hope that answered your season about the uh, cancellation of the season. Cameron, yes, we've gone test optional. We, If you have taken the test, I do encourage you to get that to us. And then as coaches, during our early read process, we make a decision whether to send that on to admissions or not. But if you have not taken the test, that's fine. We will get a full early read on you. Okay. Hi, Caleb. Yeah, I don't sense that being an issue. We're going to have to talk a little bit more about the, the international effect. I've only been here six months. I'm still trying to learn that as well. So bear with me. But again, we will work with you. Michael, thank you. Thanks for being on the call. Thanks, Caleb. Appreciate it. You know, it's weird with the chat, man. You can't always, you know, when I can see you, I can kind of tell that that answered your question and all that. When it's the chat, obviously, you just, you don't get some of that context that you miss, which is probably the one thing I miss about the entire thing. It's just not being able to see guys face to face and, and answering questions and talking about, about the institution and stuff like that. Well, man, I thank you for your time. I really do. Um, if there's nothing else, I'm going to shut it down here in a minute or two. Um, again, you have my email. You have my cell phone. Don't hesitate to ask. Hi, Max. I think the food's great. Now, here's the deal. I, you're going to look at me, and I'm not, I'm not a foodie. I don't think that takes a genius to figure out. The minute you meet me, I'm a, a lanky guy to say the least. I don't eat a ton of food. I like the food at Cornell. I think it's better than most of the places that I have worked at going forward. More than anything, you have a ton of choices. All right. You have a ton of choices in terms of that. There's a pasta bar, there's a sandwich bar. They're always cooking some meal of the day. All of those things are available as well as some standby. So I think the food's very good. But Max, one of the, you know who you should ask about that? Our players. When we get farther in the process, you've been on a player panel, ask them that. They, they'll give you an honest answer of what they think about it, all right? And they may be a little bit more particular than I am about the food. But I, I've eaten in the cafeteria about five or six times every time I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Caleb. I appreciate it. We're still asking questions. Are you getting any more texts? Not really. I don't see any emails as well. But I appreciate you guys hanging on there. Thank you, Max. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, Simon. Thanks for being on the call. All right, man, I'm going to give this another two minutes. Feels a little odd just standing up here with a blank screen or kind of a wall behind me. Good questions. I appreciate you asking about those things. Thanks, Renee. I appreciate it. Thanks for being on the call today. Donovan, oh, your transcript, Donovan, your transcripts can be unofficial for the early read. I should have been more explicit about that. We just need a document that has your grades through your first six semesters of high school. And then I need to know your senior classes, which you can just email to me or text me. I'm taking AP bio. I'm taking calculus, whatever those classes are. And then your test score you can give me. All right. If it's the SAT, please give me the uh, breakdown, the math and critical reading breakdown. 
Okay, but it can be unofficial. If you cannot get that to August 12th, and again, we're working with you. We understand your high school may not have those documents right. All right, for obvious reasons, that's fine. It's not going to affect you in this process. We just need to know you can't get it till say mid-August, so that we know. Hey, we don't want to hammer you on it. We'll wait. We'll contact you then and get this document to it. So, Donovan, again, we'll work with you in that process. Won't have an effect. Most any SAT scores, transcripts, film, email. Jaden, email is best for me. Okay, that's just maybe that's an age thing, quite frankly. That is easier for me to work with if you're more comfortable with it. It's also easier for me to just take that information and get it to our admissions people who obviously work with their own proprietary system and prefer email as well. So I prefer that if you are sending it via DM. All right. Send it to the Grinnell football account, please. Not to my personal account. Try to send it to the Grinnell football account. That gets read more. And right now, our accounts have kind of gotten intertangled, and it's harder for me to get on my own personal account. I'm working on getting that fixed here in the next week or so, which is why I haven't been very active on Twitter really for the last couple of, you know, about six weeks because there was a mistake with that. Working on that. How do you know who our recruiter is? Caleb, if you're Canada, you, I, I am. Okay, reach out to me directly. I handle international. Anything else, man? Anything else I can help you with? All right. I don't see much else. I will stay on here for just another minute or two in case there's a last question. Again, you can always contact me in other ways to find out more about uh, what's going on with our program. I certainly understand if you need to leave or get out, I'll stay on for just a minute or two more, and then I'll shut down the stream and we'll go from there. Okay. Again, I thank all of you for being on the call. I cannot appreciate enough. I, I, I'm zoomed out. All right. I'm tired of doing virtual stuff. I can't imagine how you do since you are you've been in school doing this for six, you know, six weeks, eight weeks. 10 weeks, whatever it was. I know you're getting recruited by other schools. This seems to be how things are being communicated with. I really do appreciate you spending time here on a Saturday being with us. All right. Thank you, Jaden. Appreciate it. Thank you, Caleb, again. Yes, you have a great rest of your weekend as, as well. Thanks for the time, man. All right, guys. Give it another 30 seconds to a minute. Looks like that's all the questions you have. Good questions, ones I would have asked you about the visits and where our season's headed. In the meantime, man, have a great rest of your weekend. And I do appreciate you again being on the call. I encourage you to get on that financial aid call, especially if you've already done the early read process. That's really the next phase is to get an idea of where you stand with our financial aid people and how that looks. All right. You're welcome, Donovan. Thank you, Gio. Thank you. Absolutely. Please be in touch as we go forward. All right, men. I'm going to shut her down. Take care of yourselves. I look forward to seeing you and communicating with you more about Grinnell and our football program here in the near future. Bye-bye.